they're crystalline, but they're not like salt or diamond or quartz. It, they're movable crystals. So it's called a liquid crystal. So the foundation of the membrane is called a liquid crystal. The next thing I said, well, about the communication. I said, remember when I just put the blue stain on when it was a bread and butter sandwich? It's a non-conductor. Nothing goes through. Then I said, well, wait, put the olives in there. And then I said, yes, now stuff can go through the olives. But here's what's important. When the olives are in there, they don't let everything through. There are potassium channels, sodium channels, chlorine channels. Okay, these are different channels, different olives. And what's the result? They only let in the certain things. So all of a sudden it says things can go through, but not everything. So somewhere, it's not a non-conductor. <laughs> it's not a full conductor. It's in the middle. It's called a semiconductor. So I say, okay, the membrane's a semiconductor. And then the last thing I said, well, what are the fundamental proteins that make up this awareness? And I said, well, there were two of them. They were what? The receptor and the effector. Well, the receptor, the effector I've been talking about is a channel. So basically, I said, well, they're receptors and channels. But there's a synonym for a receptor called gate. So I write down that the membrane contains gates and channels. So I'm sitting there at that moment in 1985, sit back and look at what I just wrote. The membrane is a liquid crystal semiconductor with gates and channels. And all of a sudden I stop and I think, yeah, wow. You know, I just read that definition someplace, but it wasn't in the sense of biology. Where the heck did I read that? And I look, and there in the corner of my desk, my first Macintosh, and right next to it is a book from Radio Shack called Understanding Your Microprocessor, a book for simpletons like myself on how a computer works. And I said, oh my goodness, I opened up the book, page three, introduction. And it has a definition that says, a computer chip is a crystal semiconductor with gates and channels. And I go, wow, what a coincidence. What a coincidence. The computer chip and the cell membrane have the same definition. And then all of a sudden, I started to get a little deeper, and I realized, oh my god, this isn't a coincidence. These are exactly the same. Structurally and functionally, they're exactly the same. And so I started to look at it, and I said, well, what's a chip? Well, a chip has a, a base that's a non-conductor right here. Look what the name of it is. It's called a channel. But it, and most of the times, the channel doesn't, it's not open. There's no conduction of the electricity from the negative to the positive right here. This structure is called the gate. And what happens is this is the equivalent of the receptor. When I activate the gate, it causes the channel to become a conductor. Well, remember the protein? When the, gate, when the receptor wasn't activated, the, the protein was closed. When the receptor was activated, the protein was open. And so basically, it says that, my goodness, when I activate the gate, it causes a change in the conduction property of the channel. And when the channel is conducting, the electricity goes through the channel, and you have a passage or flow of current through it. And this is exactly how the chip works. And when the gate is shut off, then the flow stops again. Well, isn't that exactly what I said happened here? Here's a receptor, here's a channel. When they're not connected, the channel is closed. Important point. Geez, I should have mentioned this, but I will now. Inside the cell membrane, there's a negative charge. Outside the cell membrane, there's a positive charge. And this is called the membrane potential, that all cells are batteries and that they function by having this charge differential so that between the membranes, positive on the outside, negative on the inside. Yeah, but that would say then if I opened up the channel, what would happen? And the answer is if I couple the receptor when it receives a signal to the channel, the channel opens up and the current flows across. Is this or is this not exactly what you just saw in the other chip? And the answer is it's exactly the same. And what really freaked me is like, oh my God, the genes don't control biology, I already knew that. I've been working 10 years on understanding how the membrane works. Now I realize this, that the cell is a programmable chip, that the nucleus is a hard disk, and the genes are programs. But like in your own computer, the disk doesn't drive your, your machinery, you have to drive the machinery. And so basically the membrane is the interface where the environmental signals, when typed on the surface of the cell, engage the functions out of the hard drive. And so when you put this all together, you start to recognize the cell membrane's a chip. Well, I did that in 1985, and in 1997, this paper came out in, oops, go backwards. This paper came out in Nature, a biosensor that uses ion channel switches. And they, here's a cell membrane, here's a receptor, here's a signal binding to a receptor, 
Underneath the cell membrane, they took a cell membrane and they stuck it to a gold foil, a piece of gold foil, like an electrode. They put an electrolyte solution between the membrane and the gold foil. When the channel opened after the receptor was activated, the flow of electricity through the channel activates the electrode, the gold foil, and then they get a digital readout of the action of the receptor. It says right there, the results are displayed on a handheld digital screen. Meaning what? They created a chip out of the cell membrane. But in truth, they didn't create the chip. That was God created the chip. They just stuck the gold foil to the bottom and were able to get the digital readout. So the point is, what my idea was, was a hypothesis. What this is, is technology based on that understanding itself. So what they've demonstrated is, the cell membrane doesn't just look like a chip. The cell membrane is a chip, and this is very important. I'm not saying it's an analogy. I'm not saying, hey, the cell membrane is like a chip. No, no. The cell membrane is a chip. It's an organic chip. And what does that mean? Then we go back to the cell and recognize that a cell and a computer are the same in regard to the components of computation. That this is an organic, this, oops, go back. This is an organic chip on the right, and this is a silicon chip, a carbon chip, silicon chip, okay? But the components that are in here are the same as the components in here. I can find them for you and tell you what they are. So when I look at the computer on the left, the one we're all familiar with, I say that central processing unit, the box that was normally under the monitor, is the what? The part that takes the data and converts it into different information. Yeah, that part is, is the cell membrane. The cell membrane picks up environmental data, light, sound, smell, uh, glucose molecules, estrogen molecules, whatever that is, and converts it into biological awareness. So the membrane is the central processor. And then I ask, well, okay, uh, how do you put data into this computer on the left? And the answer is you type on the keyboard. So data is entered via the keyboard. And I go, oh, I forgot, I'm so ahead of myself here. Uh, to go back to that central processing unit, uh, what we talk about are bits of data. Your processor handles bits of data. A bit by its definition in the electrical engineering is an I slash O. I means input slash output. A unit that has input output is a bit. Then I say, yeah, but I can tell you where that is in the cell membrane because the receptor is the input and the effector is the output. That is a bit of data. So basically, I said, yeah, it's exactly the same. It's an organic bit of data. Now, going back and saying, well, how do you type the data in? And the answer is the cell surface is the keyboard. All those antennas sticking up are the keys on a large keyboard that the, a certain chemical will come, will select a certain key. An estrogen molecule doesn't hit a histamine receptor. An estrogen molecule hits an estrogen receptor. So the entire keyboard is what the keys are that respond to the environment. So the surface of the cell is a giant keyboard. And as the cell moves through the world, Whatever is out there, the information is being typed on the keys. And as the information is being typed on the keys, it causes a program to be engaged inside in the exact same manner that when you type on your keyboard, on your computer, you're engaging the system inside. The nucleus, as I mentioned, turns out to be a disk. It's just the programs. That's why you can do, as I said, the enucleation experiment. You can remove the, the nucleus from a cell and it doesn't change the behavior because once the information is downloaded, you don't need the disk. So if I give you a disk for your computer with a program on it, you put it in your computer, you load the program, you can eject the disk. And guess what? You can still control the program. You don't, the genes don't control it, the disk doesn't control it. So the genes are just the disk. And then when you put all this together, you recognize, well, you see the data on the screen. And here's the beautiful part. The 3D image of the cell is the screen. The 3D image of your body is the screen. This data of information that you respond to is expressed on your screen. And that's what diagnosis is about in medicine. I can look at your screen and tell you about what's being programmed. So basically, what, how you are, your health or your disease states, are readouts of the program. That's exactly where that comes from.